Hello and welcome to part 15 of my video series in using Blender 2.6. This is actually a two-part series um, in making a physics simulation in Blender. Uh, so if you haven't watched part 14 of my series yet, go back and watch that, then come back to this video, part 15, and continue on. If you have watched part 14 already, welcome back, and we'll continue on. Uh, so in part 14 we created a domino scene, and we created a cube that pushed the first domino over, and we use the logic editor to make sure that the animation of the cube uh, pushing the first domino over um, occurred in the simulated game engine. So if I press P, um, the simulation will happen, the cube animation will happen, and it'll topple over all the dominoes. And that's great, I'll press escape. But there's one problem with that. Um, as soon as I press escape, all of that simulation goes away. Everything resets and we haven't recorded any of that information. We want to actually record all of that action happening into keyframes on the timeline um, so that we can render that out into a movie. Uh, but right now it's just happening solely within the game engine. Um, so to record those frames is actually quite easy. If I go up to game and I select record animation, the next time I press P and simulate my physics, it will record all of that data, all of that movement, into keyframes, which is great. Except there's one little problem. Um, right now, this cube, which does the action of pushing the dominoes over, already has keyframes on it. And if we run the simulation, um, it would get kind of caught up because it's trying to record new keyframes uh, within the simulation over keyframes that we already have. We don't want to delete these keyframes because these keyframes are part of our pushy cube action which actually triggers the dominoes to fall over in the first place. So we have to create a second action for this cube um, for which new keyframes will be re recorded into when we run our simulation. And they'll be recorded because we selected the record animation uh, option. So I'm going to go back to the dope sheet. And from the last video, we actually changed the mode of this dope sheet window from dope sheet to action editor. Uh, and that's good because we're going to create a new action, but later on we'll need to change that back to just the being a dope sheet. Uh, so back in the action editor, um, the current action that we have on there is of course called pushy cube, um, and it has the keyframes that we need, but we don't want to have those keyframes anymore, or at least on the timeline. We need, we're going to create a new action. So we're going to press plus which made a thing called pushy cube 001. That's a new action entirely. And I'm going to call this new action simulation and press enter. Now this new action I can delete because it's, because it's, it's a new action, I can delete these keyframes. And we are set to go. Um, I'm going to go ahead and make sure that's selected. The record animation is selected and press P and it'll play and it'll actually record all those keyframes and if my computer doesn't decide to hang up on me it actually recorded. I'll press escape and so it stops recording keyframes hopefully there we go so it actually recorded and it might not show up right away you might have to kind of scroll your timeline a little bit for it to appear it actually recorded about 417 or so keyframes so if I play this back I can go back to the beginning Actually, you'll see that the timeline is too short. It only goes to frame 250 by default. So I'm going to extend the end to 420. And now if I go back to the beginning, if my computer cooperates, I'm going to go back to the beginning and press play. And it'll play back very slowly, but at least it'll work. So we actually have all of this data recorded into keyframes. They're very bad keyframes because it's recording every single frame, which is not necessarily the, the thing that you want if you want to go back and change anything very easily. Uh, but it is recording and it is playing back. It's playing back very slowly. And that's because the game engine, when it records, when it runs actually, um, it runs at as fast as, as it can go based on your computer. So it might be running at like 60 frames per second. So it records 60 frames for every second that it's actually running. But then if your movie is only at 24 frames per second, uh, everything is going to get slowed down by uh, more than a half. So it depends how fast your computer is, I believe. Um, but that's why it's playing back too slowly. And there's no way, as far as I know, to fix that when you're recording. But we, we can fix it in the dope sheet. That's why this window is so handy. Um, so I'm going to go back, go outside of Action Editor, 
because in the action editor we can only see one object's keyframes at once. This is the cube action for that cube. Um, if I select the first domino, this is actually a different action. This is cube 009 action. And so every one of these has a different set of keyframes, even though it looks all the same because they all recorded 417 keyframes. Um, but I want to go back to my dope sheet so I can see all the different keyframes from all the different objects in the scene. And I'm going to select all the objects. And we're actually going to scale the animation down. We're going to make that animation happen quicker. So I select all the cubes, including the one that started the animation. And now I'll press A, and then A so that every frame is selected. And you notice how it goes all the way up to frame for 20 or so. Um, I'm going to scale that down to about half, or maybe a little bit less than half, maybe 0.4 of the same length of animation. So I'll go back to frame 0, that's important, and I'm going to press S, and that will scale towards our playhead. So it's scaling towards that green playhead. So now our animation is getting shorter, in other words, faster, or I can make it longer, in other words, slower. But we're going to make it um, quite a bit quicker, maybe up to frame 200 approximately. Um, I was doing that freehand, just using the S and moving my mouse. I could press S and then 0 0.4, and that would scale it down exactly to 0 0.4 times the uh, speed, or 60% uh, quicker. And so now if I press play again, it happens at a more reasonable speed. Now I'm just kind of eyeballing this, and that actually looked pretty good. If there were really giant cubes like building size or car size uh, dominoes, uh, that might be good, or slower might be better, but uh, I'm just kind of eyeballing it. This is animation, it's not science, so uh, that looks pretty good to me. I may be a little bit faster than that, so I might go S, and then uh, maybe S, then 0 0.8 to make it, again, a little bit smaller, or a little bit quick quicker, I mean. So I'll press play. That looks pretty good. Okay, so now we still have the problem of all of the keyframes being present. We have every single keyframe, um, and that really isn't good practice. But before we change any of that, um, I'm going to go up to File and Save. There we go. Uh, the reason why we don't like all these keyframes in a row is because if you were doing, um, if you were just animating this, you would make a keyframe, let's say, of the cube. Uh, right there, as we animated in part 14, and then we moved along to later in the timeline, and we made a new keyframe, but we didn't animate every single slot, and this makes it easier to edit later on, but as it stands, um, every single domino and every cube has every frame animated, which is going to make it hard to edit later. So I'm going to go and install a add-on, and this add-on is going to let us simplify the, the curves of the animation, in other words, the different um, directions and different speeds of the animation. So I'm going to go up to File and User Preferences, and we're going to install an add-on, which automatically comes with Blender, but it's not really installed yet, um, called Simplify Curves. And you can search for it, so you can search for Simplify, Simply Fi, um, and if you click this little checkbox um, and then close the window, you'll have access to that. So now, it's not really anywhere in our interface, this new thing that we added called Simplify Curves, but I'm going to select one of my dominoes and press my spacebar, which is Search, and search for Simplify F Curves and press Enter. And now I can simplify the keyframes, in other words, the F Curves, um, which you don't have to understand at this point, by just clicking the right arrow. And so now it's simplified it by 0 0.3. Let's see if we can find that one in our dope sheet. Aha. So there is cube 007, which is that one. And as you can see, just by turning up the simplify amount, um, it took away a lot of those unnecessary keyframes. So I'm going to turn it up. You don't want to go too high. I think 0 0.03 is fine. And then I'll go to the next one. Um, I press spacebar, and it remembers our last search. Simplify that one, and simplify that one, maybe turn it up to 0 0.3. I'm going to go through all of these. I might pause my video in the meantime. 
All right, so I've gone through every single one of my dominoes, and even my ground plane, and I've pressed space, and I've applied simplify f-curves, and I've changed that to 0 0.03. And so now if you look at all of my keyframes, they all are different because all the cubes have a, have a different action on them. They all fall at a different time. But they all are very much simpler. So if I zoom in a little bit, you'll see all the individual keyframes. Um, and there's a summary up here of all the keyframes. But now all the cubes have the same action approximately, but much fewer keyframes, which is better, significantly better. So now I'm going to save this file, and we can render it out. Uh, if you don't know how to render, you would go to the Render tab in your Properties window, and you need to go back to your Blender render engine, so you can actually render out frames. I'm going to select where my, my, my movie is going to render out to, so I'm going to change my output type to a movie file. I'm going to choose H.264, and I'm going to select to my desktop, and accept. And now I don't want to render it out with full lighting, uh, that would take too long, so I'm just going to render out kind of what we see in the window right now. Uh, so I can press this little um, button with a clapper, a movie clapper on it, and it'll render out all of the frames of our animation, but just as we see it in here, not a proper render. But that, this is actually a quick way of seeing your movie and how fast it'll go without dedicating yourself to rendering out your whole movie. Now we are rendering out 400s, so maybe I'll press escape, and I'm going to change our end point, end frame, from 420 down to about 160, because that's how long our animation is approximately. So I'll press this again um, in, I'll press escape, and press this again, and so now it'll render out the animation, but just in a very kind of rough preview mode. And it's getting up to 160. There we go. I'm going to save that. And now if I go to my desktop, it's frame 1 to 160. I can play that back. So there it is playing back. Um, it looks pretty good. Looks about the right speed. And that's it for this video. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye-bye.